welcome to another video in the chemical bonding discussion series. In this video, we'll talk about the formation of ionic and covalent bonds as well as electronegativity and bond polarity. As we have discussed in the previous video, ionic bonds are formed when there is a transfer of electrons from a metal to a non-metal to form ions. And as discussed previously in General Chemistry 1, the total number of electrons lost by the metal atoms will be equal to the total number of electrons gained by the non-metal atoms. So here is an example. We can see here the transfer of electron from a lithium atom going to a fluorine atom. In this case, each atom is one electron away from the configuration for its no nearest noble gas. So lithium should lose this electron to have the same configuration as helium while fluorine needs one electron to have the same configuration as neon. If we look at the orbital diagram, lithium loses its single outer electron and is left with a filled first energy level with two electrons while fluorine here gains a single electron to fill its second energy level with eight electrons. As we have said earlier, the number of electrons lost by the metal should be equal to the number of electrons gained by the nonmetal. And as presented here, we can illustrate the electron transfer in three different ways through the electron configuration, the orbital diagram, and the Lewis electron dot symbols. In another example, we have the transfer of electrons from a lithium atom going to chlorine atom. So here, lithium has one electron on its outermost shell while chlorine atom has seven electrons in its outermost shell and it needs to gain one electron to have a noble gas configuration. So this will result to lithium transferring one atom to chlorine to satisfy the octet rule. So once the transfer happens, it will form the lithium ion and the chlorine ion or the chloride ion. So here is an illustration wherein the lithium transfer its electron to chlorine forming lithium ion and chloride ion. Now, the presence of ionic bonds can also tell us about the different properties of ionic compounds, one of which would be very high melting and boiling points. Since ionic compounds are held together by very strong electrostatic interactions, it takes a lot of energy to separate the ions from each other. Thus, ionic compounds tend to have very high and melting and boiling points. Another characteristic is that when ionic compounds dissolve in water, they separate into cations and anions, increasing the conductivity of the solution. Therefore, ionic compounds are very good conductors of heat and electricity. In terms of covalent bonding, as we have already learned, that uh, it is a result of the sharing of electrons between two atoms. For example, here, when two hydrogen atoms with one electron each, they form a covalent bond that contains two electrons to form the hydrogen molecule. This is a stable arrangement because the shared electrons give each other or give each hydrogen atom the noble gas configuration of helium. Since in covalent bonding there is electron sharing, the shared electrons are called a shared pair or bonding pair. We usually use a solid line between the two atoms or the two element symbols to represent a two electron bond. So hydrogen is called a diatomic element because it contains just two atoms. Remember that we have six other elements that exist as diatomic elements. They are nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. As an example here, uh, which is fluorine, there is another, another diatomic element. And as you can see, there are electrons which are not involved in bonding. So these electrons are called a lone pair or unshared pair. 
Since we talk about the diatomic elements, what about the other compounds which are composed of two different elements? So, do these compounds, when they are or when they share electrons, are they attracted to both nuclei at, of the same extent? So, when a covalent bond in which the shared electron pair is not shared equally but remains closer to one atom than the other, there is what we call a polar covalent bond. We can determine this based on the electronegativity of the atoms in the bond. So when we say electronegativity, it is the ability of the atom in a covalent bond to attract the shared electron pair. In this case, an equal sharing of electrons causes the more electronegative element of the bond to be partially negative and the less electronegative atom to be partially positive. We will discuss more of these partial charges in the slides to follow. So in this illustration, we can see the electronegativity charge of the elements or the electronegative, uh, electronegativity values of the elements. The electronegativity values ranges from 0 to 4. And the higher the value, the more electronegative an atom is and the more it is attracted to the electrons in a bond. If we look at this periodic table, electronegativity increases across a period and decreases down a column. Thus, nonmetals tend to have high electronegativity values compared to metals because they have a strong tendency to hold on to and attract electrons. As I have said earlier, the electronegativity values are used as a guideline to indicate whether the electrons in a bond are equally shared or unequally shared between two atoms. In this example of hydrogen and chlorine, there is an unequal an, an sharing of electrons. If we look at their electronegativity values, chlorine has an electronegativity value of 4 while hydrogen has 2.1. Therefore, there is an unequal sharing of electrons. If that is the case, we can indicate it with a polar arrow. So the head of the arrow points to the more electronegative element. We can also make uh, or we can also mark this polar band with partially positive and partially negative symbol. The partial positive symbol is assigned to the less electronegative element while the partial negative symbol is given to the more electronegative atom. So in the case of our example, the partial positive should be assigned to hydrogen, while the partial negative should be assigned to fluorine. So some of you might be wondering how large should be the electronegativity difference to consider a bond polar. Approximately, if the electronegativity difference between the two atoms is 0.5 units or greater or 0.5 to 1.9 units, it is considered a polar covalent bond. While if an electronegative difference is greater than 1.9, it would make the bond ionic. So below uh, 0.5 units, the bond type would be nonpolar covalent bond. Here is another illustration showing the classification of bonds. In these illustrations, we can see here the different types of bonds. So for nonpolar covalent bond, there is an equal sharing of bonds since the electronegative values of the atoms involved are similar. While in the polar covalent bond, there is an unequal sharing of bonds because of the difference in the electronegativity values of the atoms involved. So in the last image, uh, this illustrates the transfer of electrons forming ionic bonds of lithium between lithium and fluorine. Here we have some sample problems. The first one is to use a polar arrow to indicate the polarity of each bond between nitrogen and hydrogen, fluorine and nitrogen, and iodine and chlorine. And then we also have to rank the following bonds in order of increasing polarity between hydrogen and nitrogen, hydrogen and oxygen, and hydrogen and carbon. So to solve the problem, we have to use 
the electronegativity values presented earlier and use a polar arrow to indicate the more electronegative element. Then, the greater the electronegativity value difference between the atoms, the more polar the compound. So, if we look at the electronegativity values, so for nitrogen, we have 3, hydrogen 2.1, fluorine is 4, iodine is 2.5, and then fluorine is 3.0. Therefore, in nitrogen and hydrogen bond, the more the uh, the polar arrow will point towards nitrogen since it's more electronegative than hydrogen. While in fluorine and nitrogen bond, the polar arrow points to fluorine since it is more electronegative. Lastly, in iodine and fluorine bond, the polar arrow will point to fluorine because it is more electronegative than iodine. Now, for the second example, uh, we compare the difference in the electronegativity value to determine the increasing polarity. So, since uh, the bond between C and H has a difference of 0 0.4, it is the least polar, while the bond between hydrogen and oxygen is the most polar because of the electronegativity difference of 1.4. So, the arrangement would be uh, the hydrogen carbon, and then the hydrogen nitrogen, and the hydrogen oxygen. And that's it for our second video for the chemical bonding discussion series. Thank you for listening.